Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'll be reviewing the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 5. So three pros that I have with the Tri-Base Rain 5 is number one, this model does a pretty good job across the board for most training modalities. So with this shoe, if you're buying them for lifting, cross training, dedicated CrossFit, or even HIIT workouts, I think you'll enjoy the overall performance of this model. It's stable enough to squat over 400 pounds, deadlift over 500 pounds. It works well for machines because we have a nice grippy outsole. And when it comes to the upper construction, it feels pretty secure. Now, it's not necessarily as breathable as the four, but I think its breathability is fine for most workout contexts. So when it comes to being a pretty good all-rounder or well-rounded training shoe, I like the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 5's construction and performance. It's a nice continuation in my opinion from the four, which was also a good well-rounded shoe. The second pro that I have with this model is I like the Micro G foam midsole. Now, the midsole I think is also a con in certain contexts, and I'll talk about that in my con section, but regarding its benefit for training, I like the overall level of responsiveness with this shoe. It's comfortable enough for things like sprints and plyometrics, but it's also stable enough to lift heavy in. So I like the overall midsole construction, and I think if you're a fan of the Tri-Base Rain line, and you like the Micro G foam midsole that is regularly used in those shoes, then you'll resonate with this model because its overall midsole and outsole construction construction are very similar, if not exactly identical, to the Tri-Base Rain 4. So if you wore that model and liked how that model felt regarding its stability and versatility, I think you will like the 5 as well. The third pro that I have with this shoe is the rework lacing system and the warp upper. Now, there is a drawback here with these two features, and I'll talk about that in a second as well, but with the warp upper, I like the overall security that it gives your foot. Also, I do feel like because this model has a slightly higher volume to the upper and the forefoot, it gives it a slightly more spacious feel compared to prior rain models. So I do like that regarding the warp upper as well. And if you've ever worn models like the Under Armour Flow Velocity Win 2 and you like how that upper felt, then I think you'll like the warp upper and the 5. You also have a reworked lacing system that kind of like follows the anatomy of the foot. And I like how it feels for the most part. Now, there are two things that kind of bother me with the lacing system. Number one is the laces. I'm not a big fan of how long these laces are and how slippery they are. You might want to replace the laces if you do decide to invest in the shoe and the laces don't really work or stay secure for you. I have had these come undone in a workout, so definitely keep an eye on that. And with this top eyelet that kind of juts up from these bottom four eyelets, it does feel a little odd at first, but with the padded tongue and with the overall flexibility of the shoe, as it breaks in, it starts to feel a little bit better because this model will arrive a little bit stiff, but once you break it in, this feature I think should feel a little bit better for you. But now let's talk about a few cons that I have with the Rain 5. So three cons that I have with the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 5 is number one, while I like the midsole construction for the most part, I think it's gonna be a miss for folks who do like more minimalist feeling training shoes or for shoes that have a lot more articulation. The Micro G Foam midsole in this model is pretty thick and honestly for things like heavier deadlifts, this model is not necessarily my favorite because it does have a slightly higher stack height. So while its stability is solid, I don't think it's gonna give you as much articulation or flexibility if you're a fan of training shoes with more articulation midsoles. The second con that I have with this shoe is the laces and I mentioned this earlier but with these kind of like spaghetti laces here they run a tad long and they're kind of slippery so they kind of lack security. I like the laces actually better in the Rain 4 so if you do invest in this model you might want to swap these out if you find them coming undone or if they just run a little bit too long for you. Honestly I'm not the biggest fan of the laces which is a bummer because I do like the lacing system for the most part regarding its overall security and construction. So the laces I know it's a tiny gripe but you might want to swap those out if you invest in this shoe. The third con that I have with this model is that this top eyelet I also mentioned earlier can put a little bit of pressure on the top of your foot. Now this is broken in for me and it doesn't really bother me that much anymore. However, if you have like really high arches or thicker feet to where you're really going to be putting a lot of stress into the tongue here, then this would be something to consider before investing in this model. You might want to look into the Rain 4 because I don't think you'll have that issue in that model. So just food for thought that this shoe I think will break in fine for most folks, but I don't think every foot anatomy will align with the shoe's lacing construction. But now let's talk about the performance of the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 5. To discuss the performance of the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 5, I'm gonna break this section into a few different parts. I'll talk about this model's performance 
for lifting and CrossFit, versatile training, shorter runs, and daily wear. In the context of lifting, I like the Tribase Rain 5 for the most part. And so I think if you're investing in this shoe for more general weight training and you want it for barbell lifts, you want it for machine work, then you should enjoy the overall stability of this shoe. Once again, like squatting over 400 pounds in this model, I didn't have issues with stability. And when deadlifting over 500 pounds, this model stability was also fine. Granted, I'm not the hugest fan of the stack height in this model, but I also generally prefer pulling heavy when I'm barefoot or using barefoot shoes. But when it comes to its overall stability for most weight training context, I do think this model will be a hit for most folks, especially if you do like midsoles that give you a nice, stable, and dense base. In the context of CrossFit, I also enjoyed this shoe. It has a very similar midsole and outsole construction to the Rain 4, which was a pretty good model for CrossFit. When it comes to rope climbs, this extended outsole wrap on the lateral medial side gives you a nice level of bite. You have this tri-base outsole tech here, which is great for balance. And then up here in the forefoot, you do have two flex grooves here to help break in the toe for things like box jumps and double unders. And the overall midsole construction gives you a nice level of bounce. So for most CrossFit wads, the Rain 5 is very consistent with the Rain 4, and it does a fairly good job for most training needs. When it comes to versatile training, I also really enjoyed the Rain 5's performance. This model feels like the athlete's shoe in the context that you can wear it for things like plyometrics, lifting, and then sprints all in one workout, and they should give you a nice level of comfort and performance for that style of training. You get a nice level of responsiveness with the midsole and with the tri-base outsole tech, you do get a nice level of balance here through the midfoot for single leg work, for single leg jumps, etc. And then also, I like the warp upper and how this lacing system interacts with the foot regarding like it's almost like anatomical construction because this model, while it does run a little stiffer than our training shoes, I think broke in a little bit faster than the Rain 4. So with the warp upper here, it gives you a nice level of security. And I think with that construction feature blended with this midfoot construction, it gives you a nice athletic athletic fit, especially if your foot anatomy aligns with this shoe's overall construction. When it comes to short runs, this model does an okay job. And so for things like 400 meter or 800 meter pickups, or even for sprint work, this model performed pretty well. And I would say that will probably be the context in which you'll want to wear the shoe for running. You could run a mile or two in them. However, they are going to be a little bit more dense in their construction. So definitely keep that in mind. And then for long distance runs, I think you want to look into a shoe that's a little bit more specific for that ask in context, because this model is once again gonna run a little bit more stable. For daily wear, the shoe does an okay job as well. Honestly, I think it's one of the better looking Tribase Rain models to date. And so if you wanna rock this model out and about, you definitely could, especially if you get a colorway that looks a little bit more casual. That's why I actually went with this colorway, speaking of looking a little bit more casual. But this is definitely a training shoe that I think you'll want to save for the gym just to get a little bit more out of its lifespan. When it comes to the price of the Under Armour Tribase Rain 5, you can expect to pay $130 USD. This is a $10 price increase from the Rain 3, the Rain 4, etc., that all had price points of $120 USD. Under Armour, why you do this? Why do you increase the price? This is why I also suggest actually going with the 4 while it's on sale because that is a pretty killer shoe and you could definitely save a little bit of money and then hopefully by the time the 4 expires, the 5s will also be on sale as well so you can save a little bit of coin then. All right, so now to answer the question, who should invest in the Under Armour Tribase Rain 5? So I think if on a weekly basis, you're blending things like HIT, CrossFit, cross training, lifting, and even short runs and sprint work all together, then I think you'll enjoy the performance of the Rain 5. There's a reason I call this model like the athlete's shoe, and it's because it performs really well in a nice wide range of contexts. Plus, if you like training shoes with lower heel to toe drops, then I think you'll also enjoy this model. This model has a heel to toe drop of two millimeters, so it sits a little bit flatter than most training shoes. Now, that being said, if you are considering the five and the four, I would say go with the four, and that's for two key reasons. Number one, it's on sale right now, and this model's price was increased to 10, by $10 USD, so whereas the Rain 4 was 120, this model's now 130, and the second reason is because the Rain 4 is very similar to the five with its midsole and outsole construction, so they both perform really well in a nice wide range of context, so I'm definitely pro save money, plus the four is not gonna be on the market forever, whereas the five will still be around for a while, so if you're on the fence between the four and five, I would say go four. Now the Rain 5 has been my favorite Rain model to date and that might be controversial depending on where you land with which Rain model you prefer, but I'm pro save money with the four, but I also think that the Rain 5 is a nice well-rounded training shoe. 
When it comes to the sizing and fit in the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 5, I think if you have a narrow or neutral width foot, you should be safe going true to size in this model. If you have a wide foot, I would tread lightly with the shoe. Despite its toe box having a little bit more volume and feeling a tad more spacious, it definitely has a similar width to the 4, so it's not the best wide foot friendly training shoe on the market. That being said though, if you wear Under Armour shoes now, especially in the Tri-Base Rain line, go with the same size that you went with those models with the Rain 5. All right, so now let's break down the differences and similarities between the Tri-Base Rain 4 and the Rain 5 because I've had a lot of questions about these two shoes and which model folks should go with. So I'm going to start with some similarities of these shoes. The first similarity is their midsole construction. So both of these models have the Micro G Foam midsole. Essentially, they have the same stack height and they feel very similar regarding their stability and versatility. The second similarity is their outsole constructions. So the tread patterns are pretty much the exact same in these shoes and you also have this tri-base tech throughout the midfoot. The wrap up on the midfoot too on each side, so the medial and lateral side of the models are very consistent and similar as well, and they perform the exact same regarding their overall rope climb performance and their overall durability. Looking at the heel constructions, and this is another similarity, we have a plastic TPU wrap down here on the bottom of the heel. Now those are the three main similarities of these shoes, but now let's talk about some of the key differences. The first major difference is the upper construction in each of these models. So over here in the Rain 4, you had this more breathable mesh. This is what gives this model a more breathable feel. And then looking at the heel construction, we also have a little bit of padding and whatnot. So it's kind of similar to the 5. However, it doesn't feel as padded as the 5. And then looking at the 5's upper, we have that Under Armour Warp upper construction that extends from the forefoot into the midfoot. And then back here on the boot, we do have a tiny bit more padding, especially around this top eyelet and as you transition into the boot counter back here. You also have an external tab here, which you didn't have in the four, which I know was bothersome for some folks because this is a slightly lower profile training shoe. Another main difference is the lacing construction and the tongue constructions. So over here in the five, we have a reworked lacing system, and we also have, once again, these four internal loops down here and this fifth eyelet that pulls in over the top of the foot. You also have a slightly thicker and more padded tongue in the five compared to the four. The four over here has a more traditional lacing system in the context that there is no top eyelet that kind of shoots up and over. You have these four loop eyelets down here, and then you have more of a traditional fifth eyelet back up here with a sixth eyelet back here for lace locking. And then looking at the tongue on the four, it's a lot thinner in nature and it is a mesh. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of this tongue. Both tongues are not gusseted, so that is kind of a similarity despite the tongues being very different regarding their material and their overall feel. When it comes to performance of these shoes, Honestly, they are both very similar, and I've tried to allude to that a bunch in this review already. So I think if you're on the fence between these models, I would say go with the model that fits your colorway preferences best and your price point best. If you're trying to save a little bit of money, the four will be a strong performing shoe. Its stability and versatility are pretty much the exact same as the Rain 5. And if you like the latest and greatest and you like that warp upper construction in the five or just how these look, honestly, this model will be a strong performer as well. So I don't think you're really gonna have a huge difference regarding each shoe when it comes to versatile training, lifting, CrossFit, etc. because with their midsole and outsoles being exactly the same, how they feel in the gym is very similar as well. All right, so when it comes to the weight, heel toe drop, and insole in the Rain 5, for my size 10 model here, we have a weight of 13.25 ounces. The heel to toe drop in this shoe is two millimeters, and we do have a thin foam removable insole in this model. All right, so now let's break down the construction of the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 5. Up here on the toe box, we have an extended outsole that wraps up. I like that it's pretty wide. It feels pretty durable as well. Looking at the midsole, we have the Micro G Foam midsole throughout. This is very consistent through the Under Armour Tri-Base Rain 4's midsole. Looking at the outsole construction, we have an extended outsole layer here on the lateral and medial side. That is for additional durability and rope climbing support. And then looking at the outsole itself, we have the Tri-Base Tech here in the midfoot, and we have a pretty smooth outsole construction here regarding its tread. We have two brakes up here in the forefoot. This gives the forefoot a little bit more maneuverability. And we do have some beveling of the heel back here, which does make the shoe slightly more comfortable for short runs and sprint work. 
Back here on the heel, we have a TPU tab for wall slide and additional durability. We also have an external tab here to help you pull on the shoe. And then looking at the upper construction, we have the Under Armour Warp upper, which is featured in some of their other running shoes. I like it. It doesn't breathe nearly as well as the mesh in the four, but I do think its breathability is going to be plenty fine for most lifters and athletes. And looking at the midfoot construction, we have this construction here that has like this unilateral build. So it kind of like follows the anatomy of the foot. We have five core eyelets, four internal loops here. And then we have this top fifth eyelet that once again, kind of wraps in over the foot. And this is what can cause a tiny bit of pressure here with these laces when breaking in this shoe. The tongue is not gusseted but we do have a loop here for additional security. And then looking at the boot back here, we do have a nice rigid boot cup and construction, and we have a little bit of padding for additional support and comfort. We do have, once again, a removal insole in this model, but that pretty much wraps up the gist of this shoe's construction. If you have additional questions on the Rain 5's construction, drop a comment down below. All right, guys, that wraps up my review of the Under Armour Tribase Rain 5. I like this shoe across the board, and while I don't think it's gonna necessarily resonate with every single athlete, I do think it's a step in the right direction for the Tribase Rain training shoes. If you have additional questions on this model, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And I know my voice is a little bit raspy. I just got back from Wadapalooza, so I do apologize there. And shout out to my man, Basement Brandon, for the Bar Don't Lie shirt. This is definitely gonna be a shirt that you're gonna see in a lot of videos going forward. Thank you.